fans are going to be excited that we're oh, we're live. So mm-hmm. before we even start the real show, we just want to say Princess may not join us today. He's getting his hair done. So <laughs> he may not he may not be able to make the show. Um, oh, he's got wow. that cloth of hair and yeah. um, he's at the beauty parlor. He doesn't go to a barber or a hairstylist. He goes to the old school beauty parlor. And because of all of that, they're quaffing him. Um, it could take a while. So he may not join us today. So you're stuck with the two of us. Um, and, <laughs> and today we're going to speak about cigar pairings. Um, yeah, so. so that should be fun. So uh, yeah. let's, uh, as they say, get the ball rolling. Hold on, kids. Go ahead. This is 2OF Entertainment. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment, with over 100,000 YouTube subscribers and rapidly growing to be the most watched and podcast cigar show broadcast globally. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment. Uh, and here we are, just us two. Yes, we sir. All, we, can just, we can talk about Princess all day long now. No, I'm just kidding. So... <laughs> Before we start, I'm going to I'm going to point out I know Princess loves this cigar, the Oliva V. Yes, 135th anniversary. Um I like it. And I know he hates it for some reason and you're a nub I, fan. It's, it's me who hates it. Yeah, you I'm sorry, one of you. Yeah, but, he, but he he hates it, but I hate the Oliva V. See, we talk about hate and then all of a sudden the UFO gods come in. So anyway, I'm smoking the Oliva V, 135th anniversary uh, cigar. <laughs> oh, there, Usman's almost back. There, hold on. We're, we're waiting for you. There you go. Now you're back. I am. Oh, you are. You were gone. The UFO god came and took you. No, so. no, 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 no. Uh, now that I I, 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 try, I do the, what you say, a proper LAN cable. Right. Sometimes in case there's some bad connection overall, where it happens, but but otherwise it's all good. So I, I saw I look the moment I went went off. I looked at the router and yeah. it was blinking apparently because of the power. Gotcha. Thing. I hate the power thing. Yeah. So, and what are you going to smoke today, my friend? Right. So I'm just about. To- oh, he's figuring it out. What we're going to talk about today, kids, ah. is we're going to talk about cigar pairings. So this will be a fun no. show since he only drinks tea. So I am smoking an Epicure. Two, the oh, one figure two. Very nice. Uh, you know that I'm I'm practically going to smoke like uh, on the show after the second week of hiatus in that yes. context. So I wanted to keep it something light. The other day, even in the cigar keep uh, call, I yeah. I lit up a very very light cigar only to see how I can go for it. I mean, I I was like half the cigar in the entire call so i'm right. just keeping it light so that it well and, and the funny part is i smoke cigars and i smoke cigars regularly right even then the smog outside in lahore is hurting me oh wow that's, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy yes no well i note that with on the on the herf on thursday um, yes it was very fun to watch everybody smoke and do, and it was more intimate because it wasn't like 800 people. It was like yes. 10 of us, and it was very nice. It was very intimate. I was going to add candles and romantic Barry White music playing in the background because <laughs> he wants to love you, love you, baby. It was, it was different, not the kind of earth I was used to, but I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, so what we talked about, which I thought was very good, is we talked about cigars and pairings, whether mm-hmm. it be tea, alcohol, soda, juice, whatever it might be. And it was interesting to hear everybody's comments. So we figured today, for the guys who missed it, or for the people that aren't part of the private club, um, we would talk about cigar pairings. So, and, so, and we even talk about something else about cigars, but that's kind of where we're going to start. So, Sounds good to me. Yeah. Right. So on the cigar pairings, um, uh, and right. So on the cigar pairings, first of all, what is a cigar pairing? So it is practically anything other than the cigar that you are consuming while smoking a cigar. It can be in the form of a beverage, hot or cold, alcoholic or non-alcoholic. It might be some of the snacks that you are having while smoking your cigar. And it might even be any kind of dessert or uh, yeah, so 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 those two things. 
that you can uh, pair the cigars with generally. Uh, when it comes to the concept of cigar pairings, and especially uh, when it comes to the drinks and even the desserts, uh, in the food, uh, generally it is advised to have a proper meal or at least have had something uh, to eat before you smoke a cigar. Unless it's a very morning uh, uh, light cigar and that you're going to have it still with a Macallan 25, uh yeah <laughs> it's yeah, it's this is, a, have this, is, this is a full body so mm -hmm. um this morning after i worked out i had my usual eggs you know i had ah. to kill the chicken first and then <laughs> i i had made i had i made homemade pizza last night yes i can cook who knew um and i wow. had a slice of pizza this morning about five minutes before we went live because i realized if i didn't then we would be doing another show called the technicolor yawn <laughs> and I didn't think that would be an interesting show for people to watch. So oh, yeah. there you go. But yes, yeah, so, but you, I agree. You do have to eat. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have any light body or medium. I, everything I smoke is a full body cigar. So I always have to eat or drink something before I, uh, you know, get to get the uh, sugar in the blood to make sure Absolutely. that I don't do the Technicolor yawn, which is important. Okay. I don't think people realize that. I think, yeah. well, I know one of the guys go, I just drink water. But yeah. I think he forgot to tell everybody that he just probably had like a steak or a chocolate cake or something to yes, you know, line his stomach. You just don't get up in the morning and light a cigar. I mean, you can, um, and you're 50, 50 at best then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in that, so in that context, uh, it's about like have a meal, even with the food pairing, sometimes when you see, okay, you've had a cigar uh, right. and you smoke the cigar later, but because of the kind of food that you've consumed or the final food you ate, the cigar tastes different or the experience is different. Mm -hmm. Hence, uh, it is advised to have things that, that generally go well in terms of food when it comes to the cigars, mostly steaks uh, right. or, 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 or meat uh, or, or some like red meat, white meat, both of those work well right. uh, in terms of having, having uh, as a food or sometimes protein. Uh, fish or sushi, for that matter, are are okay. I mean, some people like that, uh, right. but generally found that whenever I've had those, uh, and I've had a cigar after that, uh, my experience was slightly different. Not that it was bad; it was slightly different than my usual one. So mm. now, I'm to, if I really want to enjoy the complete wholesomeness of the cigar, I prefer to have a steak or some form of meat and proteins uh, right. before that. Now, moving on to the pairing in terms of drinks. Again, it depends purely if you consume alcohol or if you do not consume alcohol. If you consume alcohol, then I'm sure Stephen is the best person to advise. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yes. Yes, and I'm the alcoholic. Thank you. And it's, by the way, it's 7.06 in the morning and geo to everybody oh um, yes <laughs> so, but, but at the end but i like my cigars with scotch and i'm not sure why it's just how i was how i was done like when my grandfather took us out for my first cigar after graduating university it was scotch and cigars and a big steak meal and i think that's one of the reasons and i pair mine with scotch not anything else i mean i'll drink juice at some point because you run out of scotch and then I cry a little bit, but you know, you can't drink a whole bottle of scotch. Well, I mean, you can, but then they think you're an alcoholic. Um, but I, I like it with my scotch. It's, I usually use Macallan. I drink Glen Fargus, like a Glen Fargus 25 um, and uh, um, Sorrento, the Japanese whiskey I like it with. And th those seem to be the ones, in my opinion, that mm -hmm. seem to pair best with my cigars that I smoke. I like it's Macallan, whether it's the 18, the rare cast, the 25, the 50, um, mm -hmm. whether it's Glen Fargus, 18 or 25, or their 40 is absolutely delicious as well. Um, or um, the Sorrento. And I like that. And Sorrento is just the harmony and it just seems to go very nicely. It brings out the flavor for me in the, in the scotch or the whiskey. And it also brings out a little bit of the flavor in the cigar. And whether it's a Cuban or a non-Cuban, that's just what I've done. And, and, you know, wine doesn't go well with it. I've tried that once. It didn't work. Um, yeah. And it's just it's just one of those things. And food-wise, if I have a steak or I have a big thick piece of pork chop or something, like a meat meat, not a chicken, not a fish, whatever, then I definitely have to have a cigar after. There's just something about having a big steak 
and a cigar, a big piece of pork and a cigar. So, or a pizza apparently at seven o'clock in the morning and having a cigar. It's the same thing. But it was a meat. It was a it was a meat pizza, so it was okay. Um, but it's it's just just something about that, and I think it just enhances the experience. And the other thing that we discussed, which I thought was interesting, is that it's not just the the pairing of the food or the pairing of the drink. It's the pairing of the company. Like if you, have good, if you have good company, like we do on the show, then all of a sudden it's just, it makes it a more pleasant and wonderful experience. You know, whether it's just the two of us Absolutely. or the three of us, it's perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, that goes without saying, I mean, the company is what matters the most. I mean, sometimes, yes, I understand and I agree. Uh, you need your own company as well. Sometimes right, right. Uh, there are a few people who like that. Uh, generally when I have to smoke something for the first time, I do try and, uh, smoke that cigar at my own right. uh, unless I am with a friend who I know has a very similar palette like mine and we exchange notes but I do that to understand the cigar and sometimes I do that but otherwise yes with the company it is always always great uh, yeah. when it comes to that part as far as the um, now moving on to the drink or uh, the non-alcoholic uh, pairings there yeah. are a lot of non-alcoholic pairings like the same way, <clears throat> there are a lot of alcoholic parents. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in terms of even if, when, when, uh, when I'll, I'll just brush up on a, on a or talk about a little bit about one of the alcoholic parents that is considered to be very, very, very apt for the cigars and generally at least uh, by the Cuban uh, industry are the rums. Okay. Uh, because because uh, they say that along with the scotch, uh, rum is also a very good pairing and generally they, they prefer the Havana clubs or Eminentes or any of their rums and I'm guessing that's more to do with their own industry right. but I've, I've also heard it from a lot of people that they like rum uh, right. but we're talking of not the white rums but the colored rums from that the dark right. rums yeah the dark rums exactly okay. so, so I guess that has something to do with the dark rums or the whiskeys or the uh, scotch uh, to be uh, better pairings as compared to all the others. Uh, the concept of pairing, again, moving on to that, is that the pairing should not overpower the cigar. It should right. complement and enhance the overall experience and the flavor profile of the cigar. And that is why it is generally advised to have a pairing in terms of drink uh, or even desserts, which which enhance the overall profile of the thing. Uh, when it comes to the non-alcoholic pairings, coffee tends to be one of those very, uh, as they say, universally true kind of a pairing. Right. <clears throat> now, it's a personal preference. You prefer black coffee or you prefer the cappuccinos or lattes. Uh, and, and that's how it is. Uh, similarly, tea uh, or, or the English breakfast mm. tea or the black tea right. is very interesting and very good pairing in, at least from the part of the world where I come from I prefer tea uh, sometimes even more than coffee uh, from a from a knowledge or from a from a very practical purpose the torcedors and the torcedoras in the Cuban factories uh, have tea black tea as part of their daily routine uh, during the work shifts also because it helps them and allows them to cleanse the palate and right. is considered to be a good pairing for cigars. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much uh, in terms of the hot drinks, uh, non-alcoholic. In terms of cold beverages, again, there are a lot of cold brews. There are a lot of, <clears throat> uh, I wouldn't say the shakes because the shakes overpower completely and they just take away the entire pleasure, but right. some cold brews and all that stuff, which, which complement the overall cigar profile are good to pair with. Similarly, there are few, uh, I would say, drinks in terms of uh, which, which are more to do with the grapes and, and move towards the non-alcoholic side of the alcoholic feel kind of right. thing, uh, right. which, which pair well. Uh, moving on to the desserts, uh, generally the desserts with chocolate. Uh, yes. and, and if they are dark chocolate, they pair very well with a lot of cigars. Yep. I personally prefer and like the 70 or 72 plus. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. 
uh, uh, of of the ch dark chocolates to pair with. And if I'm not wrong, one of the favorites I have is uh, Lindt or Godiva or any of those, especially where the dark chocolate is 70, 72 plus, and right. it with with some orange tinge to it. And they're really well pair. Uh, and 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 the day other day when I was talking and I. And I started to see why do I like that very much. So I started to read more and I was talking to another friend of mine and he said, well, you don't drink, you don't know. But since Negroni also has that orange peel kind of thing, oh, it's right. maybe one of those elements or that kind of a pleasure that you get out of the whole thing. Right. You don't want to do that at all. So maybe that's the case. But for the stronger cigars, uh, dark chocolate, especially with that orange or sea salt kind of thing, really works well. Well, it's also good because it gets the sugar into your bloodstream, mm -hmm. which is important, which people don't realize that whether it's alcoholic, like my go after I'm done with scotch, I go to because I'm five years old, I go to cran grape. That's my <laughs> that's a great that comes right after the scotch. Uh -huh. I mean, but I don't I won't drink just water. And if I'm going to like I have a friend who owns a, a cigar lounge in, in Boynton Beach. Um, called Smoke In. So Abe, there's another shout out, mm -hmm. send the check. Um, but when I used to go there, you know, you I would drink water and smoke my my Oliva V Double Toro, which I know yeah. was a, well, lo loves that cigar. Um, <laughs> but I would smoke that. But before but before I would go, I'd go to the um, to the little Jewish deli next door. <clears throat> this is when he had his place in Palm Beach Gardens, and I'd have like a little, you know, a bagel with cream cheese and the Nova, like I'd eat that. And then they had chocolate at the counter, like you said, mm -hmm. because they, because Abe didn't have anything. You could, I guess you'd bring your own liquor, but that's, you know, can only drink so much. So I would get chocolate. And so before I'd start smoking my cigar, I'd always have like, like I, the chocolate bars are big, right? So a quarter, so four cigars, four quarters before each cigar. Oh, yeah. And then what I would do is I drink my water. So I stay hydrated. The chocolate put the sugar and also enhanced the flavor and it was perfect so it was good so i like that i mean so at the end of the day that's the uh that's the important thing and the ufo gone has gone him again kids so you people listening on the podcast oh there you are so yeah so i, I don't think people realize sometimes that it's it's good to have a full stomach on a very yeah. full body cigar but it's really the um the sugar in your bloodstream that helps you also not get sick. So you chocolate, Absolutely. alcohol, Absolutely. juice, whatever it might be. So, or a dessert. I've never tried cigar after a dessert. Like when we used to go to London and they'd allow us to smoke <laughs> Cubans, if we would, we had dinner in London, mm -hmm. the guy would bring over the table. So we'd get scotch and he'd be like, would you like a dessert? And I'm like, I want the cigar. And they're like, you don't want cake. You don't want, I'm like, no, no. Just uh -huh. my cigar and my scotch at the end. So I never really had it with like a, a proper dessert. I've had it with a candy, the chocolate bars, but not with a proper dessert. I would I would say go for it sometime. And maybe if you can get one of those molten lava kind of thing, which is oh. and yeah. ideally with dark chocolate. Yes, yes. You would really enjoy it. That's at uh, least I, I, I that's my personal favorite. I mean, I love it, especially I love the uh, molten lava in any case. But right. then when it is with the dark chocolate, it becomes like very, very good, especially the oozing cream, uh, mm -hmm. warm one. It really pairs well with the whole thing. So I like that me, idea. Yeah. So to me, that that's always very, very good uh, from a perspective of the pairings and, and how to go about it. Uh, again, one more thing uh, along with that is, <clears throat> in addition to the blood sugar, keeping yourself hydrated while smoking cigars is very important. Yes. It yeah. always allows you to enjoy and have a very good experience as compared to anything else. Right. And so keeping water with you or anything that you like in terms of the hydration perspective, it is always great. Uh, some people really like sparkling water. Yeah. And sparkling water is very good to allow cleansing of the palate along with uh, while you're smoking so right. some people use uh sparkling water not only to keep them hydrated but as a palate cleanser after right. a little while while they're smoking or while they're eating or while you're doing something like that <laughs> and if you add a bit of uh, a dash of lemon or or, or a bit of uh, ice in that it gives a very very refreshing feel to it 
uh, in terms of your hydration as well right. as using of the pilot. So I, I do that sometimes as well. Uh, right. But otherwise, I, I keep plain water uh, with me to to keep myself hydrated from that perspective. So these are one of those those pairings which are kind of universally, globally accepted, right. and, and 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 bring about the concept of pairing to the whole thing. And I think that's that's a very very uh, interesting complement to the whole experience of right. cigar smoking. Well, and I think for the cigar novice that starts out, it depends on who taught them. So like I said, mine first was after a big steak dinner with scotch. So I was like, that's, in my mind, that's you have scotch with your cigar. Um, and then sometimes you can't. So then it's like, if you're at a cigar lounge, sometimes I don't have scotch. So it's sort of like, all right, what do you have? You got juice? <laughs> yeah, ju juice will work. And if they don't have that, it's like, I'll go get a candy bar. I'll be back type of thing. And then mm -hmm. you just have water. So it really, it becomes a personal preference. But here in the uh, cigar lounge at the house, um, it's just easier just to smoke scotch cigars. So whether I'm smoking at seven o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock at night or later or earlier, it's always scotch and cigars and with my, with my, uh, cran grape chaser. Um, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and it's perfect for me and I don't get sick so far, knock on wood. So, which is a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to get sick. That's the worst feeling in the world when you get no. sick. <laughs> you know, that's, that technicolor yawn is not a is not a fun thing. Yeah, well, well, getting sick of cigars is also fun only once it is over and done with, and you think about it like a week later. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, at that time, it's one of those extremely bizarre and bad things that you're going through, and you're like, "What the hell did I do to myself?" Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and, and the, you've actually reminded me of a very interesting thing. It's about three years ago right. and, and and for people who see me smoking a lot of cigars and all that stuff just for their awareness or their uh, very interesting knowledge prior to like three years ago the maximum numbers of cigar i will smoke in one sitting would not be more than two ever okay like we are talking of an average cigar length of a robusto or maybe maybe uh a churchill at the match so, so if i'm having a churchill or a double corona the only thing i will probably have is a half corona or maybe at the max a robusto or two okay. robusto so this is kind of stuff uh so it's like three years ago when i got uh, or uh, spoiled myself more so one fine evening few of us friends were uh sitting at my place on the in, on the terrace it was cold it was like in the four or five degrees Celsius kind of temperature. So let me help the Amer let me help the people in America out. That's thirty eight to forty degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead. Got mm -hmm. <laughs> to help them out. They can't do math. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So so with that and 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 some cool breeze, we were we we had a bonfire. So we, right. we lit up the, the fireplace and all that. We were smoking, and it was like we started smoking at like nine thirty ish, nine nine thirty ish at night. Right. Oh, done with one double corona and then i had a robusto and i was like kind of done and a friend of mine was like what are you talking about we're not leaving yet we're smoking we're smoking you're smoking again i was like god no no you're smoking fine now i lit up a third cigar right right so by the time i was done i felt that, okay i am sweating a little bit and something and, and you know when, when it's it's winters and when you're sitting outdoors, you're also, I mean, when I now uh, remember uh, mistakes, you don't drink too much of water because right. water's really feeling cold and all that. It was all going on. So, right, right around 1.30ish types, everything closes up, wraps up, the boys leave, and I hit the bed. And then I can not forget the next two hours two and a half hours <laughs> one of those extremely crazy and i was praying to god please get me through this and i don't yep. want to die because there was so much of palpitations there was like so much of blood rash and i could not understand to an extent that somewhere around 3 3 15 in the morning i felt like throwing up and once that happened sure, that was when i was like Okay, yep. now I'm 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 kind of fine. I, I had yep. water that I, I tried to have a candy and all that. But yes, that's when and that's the day when I learned that 
we all do mistakes but these are the mistakes i need not to repeat and i guess that was my entry to more than two cigars and now i well i I've, i've been through situations where i've had four to five cigars in a single sitting as well yes the sitting would also mean eight hours six, long yeah, yeah five six hours seven hours uh, long sitting but yeah. yes now the, the as they say the stamina has built up more so <laughs> <laughs> on saturdays when i would go to my friend's place i would get there at around 10 o'clock in the morning and we'd leave around six and i probably would have four or five of my oliva v double toros yeah. and i would just be and it would just be like smoke wait a few uh, smoke wait, and it'd be like ah, and it was no big deal um the mm-hmm. only time that i've ever really gotten sick on a cigar is I, when i drank a cigar many years ago with coffee and oh. for some reason i had a cigar and coffee and i was like 10 minutes into it i was like nope this isn't going to be good and i put the cigar out and went right into the bathroom and i was like nope i'm oh. going to be here for the next year i was like mm-hmm. so and i'm like so i don't do the coffee thing anymore with it so <clears throat> I won't, I, I, I'm a five-year-old, so I drink Milo, which is hot chocolate <laughs> from Indonesia, right? Um, which is like a form of Gatorade. And I love that. That's what I do instead of coffee. But even that doesn't quite do it for me. So if I don't have scotch handy, which <laughs> then there's a problem. But if I don't, I do my cran grape and that's fine. It's just sort um, of like, oh, I'm good with that. Very interesting. Now that you've talked about Milo, uh, yeah. I can suggest you a better alternative, not that I have anything to do with Milo. Right, and right. Just, just, just to make you feel not a five years old, uh, <laughs> is um, Bourneville yeah. makes that very good chocolate powder. Like, Ooh, well, okay. well, Cadbury owns the brand, well, Mondelez owns the brand Cadbury and Bourneville, if I'm not. I've had with. Cadbury before. It's yeah. very good. Cadbury, Cadbury is very sweet and yeah. like Milo. But right. Bourneville, I suggested specifically because it is slightly towards the darker side of it. Oh, hence okay. The, hence, hence, the experience would be, yes, you're getting that sugar thing, but not too sweet to make gotcha. it like the whole thing. So Bourneville is sometimes very, very interesting as a pairing. Right. I, will, I will be trying that now. So, but mm-hmm. I buy Milo by the by the truckloads because they come in the three pound <laughs> cans. Yes, so yes. I literally buy when they got like I, I go on Amazon every now and then. It'll be like at a at a price that I think is worth, and I'll be like, mm-hmm. I gotta get like ten of them now before they go up again. So <laughs> I think the reason, and I apologize for everybody that drinks Milo. I think Milo goes up only because I drink it. Um, right. Even the Korean grocers here that have it, or the, or the Chinese food stores that have it, when they have the three pound cans and they're like 18, 19 bucks a can, I just literally take it off the shelf like this. <laughs> and, my, and, I'm, and everyone looks at me like, seriously, how old are you? I'm like, I, I have lots of kids. I'm thinking, yeah, me, I'm the kid. So it's like, that's it. It's like people just think I'm crazy. Trust me, they're not thinking that you're crazy or you have not many kids. They think that you're going and selling it somewhere again at a margin. I was just <laughs> going to think. Yeah, selling yeah. It. So yeah. who, Nestle's who makes Milo or anybody who needs Milo, I have 9,000 cans. Um, oh, so I'm willing, I'm, I'm, willing, I'm, willing, I'm willing to part with a few. Not that many. <laughs> They're, they're hard to find, apparently, every now and then, because the cocoa, you have a cocoa shortage, we have this shortage, or that sort. so getting Milo's in a, an event. Well, that's actually very interesting news to me, because it, the, Milo is hard to find on your side, or at least it, it, it requires some kind of uh, struggle, because Milo in Pakistan is like, meh. It's like in, in, in all the formats that you can have. It's in the powdered format, it's in the liquid format. Like oh, we don't juice. get the liquid here. We only get the powder. Ah, okay, so so we so even the KFC, McDonald's, Hardee's, really? Hardee's which is called Junior, and all that stuff. Right, right. All their kids' meals or their chicken meals or whatever you call them. Come with the Milo. All the local brands who have this kind of food, uh, they have an alternate to the fizzy drinks, which is either Milo or an orange juice or something. Okay. So so Milo is very big here. Yeah, well, Milo is very. Here's what well, I guess we're going to do in, tr- in the show on tr- nutrition now. Milo is actually at nutrition. Like I read the thing, it's like it's yeah. better than Gatorade, not as good as coconut water, but it's Absolutely. very nutrition. And I and because I, I work out, it's sort of like coffee's not my thing. And so I got turned on the Milo, and mm-hmm. I like in the mornings now after I work out and I make my eggs, I have my eggs with my Milo. You know, and oh. that's, that's I have every day. I have like two or three cups of Milo throughout the day, 
and I'm a happy guy. I've already had my first cup of Milo this morning, sir. So, very, very and now, and now, so I'm sugared up, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, and that's why when people see me drinking on any of the shows, they're like, what is he drinking in those crazy cups? And I'm like, Milo. So I ah. it. If it's scotch or juice, you'll see it because it's in a clear glass. But Milo comes in its own crazy glass. But yeah, I love my Milo. It's the best. Keeps me, keeps me, like I said, keeps me from doing crazy things. So I like yeah. it. It's, and it's just a fun drink. Yeah. Now that you know about Bourneville, try that. Because it's oh. easier to find in the U.S. given the fact that Montelis is a U.S.-based company. Hmm. Uh, so yes, Cadbury uh, chocolate powder. You know where I had Cadbury? When I yeah. was on... Um, Emirates okay. going to Dubai. I said to the girl, the flight, the, the flight attendant, I said, you'll have to, I said, I'm five years old. So she chuckled. Um, and she said she liked younger men, but I don't think that young. Um, <laughs> but I said, do you have hot chocolate? And she says, we have Cadbury's. I was like, oh, uh -huh. so I had like, so she just, every hour I got a Cadbury's and on the way home, I did the same thing. So I was like, yeah, so I, it, it was very good. It was very, um, is very chocolatey. It was very Cadbury. Mm. I wanted to go with a British accent after. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but it was very, it was very, very good. I, I, I've had the pleasure of working for the company. Uh, mm -hmm. Hence, I know. I mean, uh, so I've I've been part of the Montelis chain in Pakistan. Uh, so I know Cadbury and Bonneville. And well, yes, you explained to yourself. You were an Emirates, so uh, Cadbury and Montelis is very big in this region. Okay. Hence, hence, hence the availability. Off that, uh, sure. And now, so, Milo, I'm gonna go to have to go to Pakistan just to drink Milo now. Oh, yeah, so. go on. <laughs> yeah, we will we, 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 we'll load you up with a lot of suitcases filled with liquid Milo. <laughs> well, no, no, no liquid. I figured customs don't let that come through, but uh, like the uh, no. three pound cans of Milo, I'll try the liquid. But I can imagine customs going through that thinking there's drugs in it, but like, no, nope, just Milo. Sorry, I need to disappoint you. It's just, it's just, just chocolate. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> not like I'm smuggling Cuban cigars in, don't look yeah. over, but, uh, then, you know, so, but yeah, yeah, it's very cool. I like, I, I like that. I like, you know, I like different pairings. And then, like I said, the guys were talking about different things that they drink. Some drink wine, some drink this, some drink, I was like, interesting. So just to hear what they were drinking also was fascinating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, wine, I think, um, not that I know of, but wine has been considered to be a good pairing or some form of champagnes right. uh, with Cador Say, which is a Cuban brand specifically made and introduced for the French market. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, so probably that's the reason, and that's why the cigar itself is a very light cigar, and so is uh, the white wines or the champagnes or or things like that. Right, right. Interesting. So, so maybe, yeah, so maybe that's that's the connection to keep it light and all of that. But yeah, so that's that's what I think. My problem with a, a light body or a medium body cigar, mm -hmm. I, how do I put this without sounding like I'm, like I'm a drug addict? Um, it doesn't give me the kick that I want. <laughs> you know, like, like, that, like that song from, you know, back in the forties, I get no kick from champagne. Not, you know, um, it's a, it's a sort of, it's, it's like that. I like the full body because I enjoy the kick from it. But now if I'm smoking with a novice, I have a friend of mine, when I come, mm -hmm. I go to New York and we smoke. He smokes a cigar only when I'm in town. I get him the um, the AVOs, um, mm -hmm. like a natural AVO, and I'm like here, and he's like, because it's a very light, mild cigar, yeah. and I know yeah. he won't get sick from it. Um, <laughs> and because I I have friends who'll be like, I'm going to smoke what you smoke, and I'm like, you should probably not do that. You know, yeah. I mean, you can like the Padron 1926, for instance, that's a very full body cigar. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. I told people, I said, this is a full body cigar. Like you have to, some people great, some people know. And I'm like, so before you smoke that, let's see if you can just handle paper. And I, uh, yeah. my paper cigars are AVO and Romeo and Julieta. You know, those are the ones to me that they're just, you 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 get the enjoyment of smoking a cigar without the, uh, the kick of smoking a cigar. Right. So, you know, and there's some cigars like the Davidoff, um, Winston Churchill late mm -hmm. hour. That mm -hmm. one is, that's very full. But like I had one the other night. You saw, I, I put that, I sent that one on my Instagram. I had the Churchill one instead of yeah. the little Robusto and I'm sitting in halfway through it. And I'm like, I'm as high as a kite on this cigar. <laughs> so I was like, I was, in, I was, I'm not going anywhere. I didn't care, but I'm thinking that car, that cigar had a lot of kick to it. Um, oh, yes. so, yeah. So to me, it's sort of like, I enjoy that 
to an extent, to another extent, no. And then like the CAO Brazilian, full body, but it doesn't give you that as much no. of a kick as Davidoff. For whatever it, reason, I'm not sure why. I don't know. I mean, to me, CEO Brazilian Amazon was not that strong or a full body from that perspective. They call it a full body. I think it's more of a medium. Yeah, I also think than so. A, than a full. The I do I do the Churchill um the Churchill after dark. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Definitely, it's definitely that's like full, full. And I enjoy those. And I, I was gonna smoke one this morning. It was between this and the um the Oliva because I knew how much Rizzo loved Oliva. I purposely chose <laughs> this, but then I didn't realize Princess was getting her hair done. Um, so it was sort of like I like, but that there's a nice something nice about that cigar. Now, if I have that cigar in the morning, I'm useless until noon. Uh-huh. Like I'm not going anywhere, I'm just sitting here and going, this is <laughs> like it's pretty outside. <laughs> you know, it's like you know. I smoke the Oliva. I smoke the CAO. I smoke whether it's uh, the the punch or I smoke the 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 Partigas or whatever it is from Cuba. And I'm like, yeah, well, we can go. We can go. We can go run a marathon. We'll go run run right now. But after the, the dark from uh, Davidoff, I am literally like, no, no, I'm good for like a few hours. I can just sit here and enjoy and contemplate yeah. life, yeah. you know, because it's very. It really is that kick, which is it's once in a while. It's fun to have that. And then I, I have friends who smoke them all the time and they feel nothing. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, so it's one of those things. What else we got for the kids before uh, to keep them yeah. occupied? Or are we done right. with the show today? Uh, well, but yeah, I mean, we can we can think about that in that way. Uh, <laughs> before that, how's yeah. your cigar smoking? I got to tell you, I um, unlike Mister Rizza, this is the Oliva V 135th anniversary cigar. Great mm-hmm. smoke. The ash doesn't stay on it. It's already fallen off on me twice. But um, really? other than that. The smoke is always good. You get like I like I always say, I get a lot of smoke from the non-Cubans, little yeah. flavor. Um, and so we're outside, so I might as well enjoy the smoke. But to the gentleman's point on Thursday, as he said, when you're outside, you kind of do miss a lot of the flavor from the smoke and the cigar because we're outside, it's blowing all over. Yes, uh, yes. So I do I do miss that, but you know, at the end of the day, it's still the fact that I get to enjoy my my cigar, I'm okay with. Now, how is your, I know yours is going to be great. Well, so my, my, mine, uh, for some odd reason, is acting funny today. So mm. I, if, you, if you see, if you've noticed this this part of the cigar, right. the wrapper kind of unraveled a little bit. And that generally happens when you've had your cigar in a, uh, in, 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 in a properly or, or more humid condition and it comes out to a lesser humid condition or, or slightly dried in. So the, the sudden temperature change sometimes creates this issue uh, or the other way, uh, if it was less humid and, and the outside is very humid. Uh, now that the temperatures have fallen down, the relative humidity has gone down yet. Uh, and, and there's a lot of dryness out there. Right. I think that because of it being in the electric humidor and me taking it out just before the smoke, kind of created that um so so that's something which i don't really enjoy and like that part specifically when the wrapper comes off or there's a right. still little bit of it in my mouth uh i i try and i like to smoke my cigar uh primarily or pretty much dry uh and and i feel <clears throat> there's this very interesting <clears throat> excuse me concept of uh, puff puff in a cigar and when you say right. puff puff that's like circling around the same cigar and everyone getting to feel and enjoy the same cigar, knowing what they are getting out of it and exchanging notes and all that stuff. That generally happens in a group of four, five, six people right. uh, who, one, are close to each other, know each other, are big aficionados and all that. And also, uh, it doesn't well, actually not necessarily require to be big aficionados or old time aficionados. Anyone can do that. Right. But then, the whole concept is they all bring in similar kind of cigars. I mean, if they're smoking vintage cigars, they do that. If they're smoking right. new cigars, but different cigars, they do that. To just enjoy. And in that context, I guess I am one of those whose cigar is like goes completely dry to the next person. But when I get back, I was like, guys, I'm sorry. I'm not going to smoke this. Yeah, because <laughs> it's all it's all wet. Yeah, you're yeah, like I am. Yeah. I, I like my dry. I like it dry. Yeah. So. So, so, so from that angle, I, I sometimes don't like it, but yeah, uh, so that's the only part which I'm not liking. Other than that, it's it's been fine. I think uh, as as the Cubans are slightly hard on draw, 
this one probably was a slightly hard on draw initially when I started it. Okay. Uh, it, it tunneled a bit, but now it's smoking fine. And since I wanted to keep it light and medium, so that's that's one thing which I'm, I'm enjoying. Too. Well, I will say on the Oliva V that I'm smoking, their 135th anniversary one, the draw is excellent. Like, yeah. you know, mostly on the Olivas, I've never had a problem. It's kind of like the Brazilian Amazons. I've never, uh -huh. every now and then out of every hundred cigars, I'll smoke of that. There's going to be that one or two where it's like, are you serious? It's like sucking a golf ball through a garden hose, <laughs> you know, and you've got to like roll it and do this and get almost like, you know, massage it. Like the lady forgot to do with the, the factory. Um, and then all of a sudden you're good. So, you know, it works well. The other thing, which is interesting when I get new cigars, whether they're Cuban or nons, um, I leave them on my humidor anywhere from two to four weeks before I even consider smoking them. So Agreed. they can, so yeah, so they can, I, not so much, I guess, to ferment, but for just for them to get acclimated. So when I smoke them and I clip the top, they, they, they don't, they're not crunchy. They're not this. Cause even if they ship them with the packs, I find that you still can't smoke them right away. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I've done that mistake many a times. And every time I've done that mistake of smoking cigars that have traveled for, let's say mm -hmm. more than two days, uh they have just hit me in the face either being unraveling or yep. being very bad or ammonia or i don't know what <clears throat> yeah and so now it's it's a standard rule whenever i get something i just put it in the humidor and i forget about it for at least four to six weeks uh there you go. and then i try the first one i still sometimes get surprised uh right. not in a good way uh, but then, uh, unless it's a very, very fine or very high-end cigars per se, and, and not right. from the perspective of their money, but perspective of the quality or, or the the category of cigar they're in. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so so I've, I've come to that conclusion that it, it's like that. Yeah. Well, the other thing I have is like when I go to a, a chemist and I buy cigars, if I'm I, I hate going there to buy a cigar. To mm -hmm. smoke it there because yeah, I still have some pure garbage. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I still want to put it away for six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing is when you know, like when I used to go every weekend and smoke cigars with the boys, you know, because I bought all my boxes there and everything, yeah. um, they didn't care if I brought stuff and didn't buy things because I already bought like 19 boxes of whatever. Absolutely. So I would just bring, so it was different. And then guys would go, oh, I'm going to go get into the, to the walk in humidor, which was good. But still in my mind, it still needs to be, you know, this mega humidor that people walk into, right? It's the size of someone's bedroom or bigger. And I'm thinking to myself, I still want it to be in this little box that does yeah. whatever the little box does to yeah. get it to where it really needs to be, not sitting out in a, in a big walk-in humidor. So, Absolutely. I mean, if, if that's all there is, then that's all there is. But Yeah, you know, in the dry boxing really helps. <clears throat> yeah. I, 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 well my electric humidor doesn't have the functionality but right. what i've done is i have kind of um very interesting very small uh this little uh and a close-up of it there you go so so this is a very small little humidor uh right. for like 10 cigars by james j fox this is their like own branded with with some very piano finish black on this right uh, from so I, I, what I do is whenever I have to smoke a cigar, I just take a few of those cigars out. I put them in it right. uh, uh, with some kind of a Vida if, if I see that. So to ensure that that is something which I, I keep on my optimal and the temperature is fine. So I keep it so it becomes like, so today one of the mistakes that I did was I didn't do it. Uh, ah. And then, in the sense, I'm, I'm, I'm facing the challenge. Gotcha. But, but but dry boxing really helps. Dry boxing really helps. I think a uh, few of those very high end uh, electric humidors or the big size ones which come right. with a standard dry box, I think that's one thing yeah. that you should uh, do for at least 45 minutes to an hour in a dry box and you're good with yeah. that. Well, you know, it's funny. I was thinking earlier, you know, I have that big, um, the big Churchill hat from Stavidoff, the yeah. humidor, the Churchill yeah. one. And I, and I use it as a as a ornament on the desk and everyone's mm -hmm. like, when are you going to put cigars in it? I'm like, never. I was ah. like, I, I was like, I mean, it's the, perf it's the perfect, it has, you know, the hat, the top of it's the ashtray. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to dirty it. It's like, it's too pretty to use and to put the cigars in. And then you got, I'm like, no, no, I'm good. 
I just like the hat. I don't want to like use it, but that's a perfect dry yes, cigar. It is, it is, it is actually too pretty that yeah. I have been yeah. now trying to find that. Unfortunately, when it came out, right. I tried it a couple of times on Davidoff website. It was just gone because apparently they had given it as a gift to a lot of people who purchased boxes. So it came like, yeah, yeah I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. So, so now I, I, I'm actually on <clears throat> a lot of websites and all of that. And probably I'm going to check on eBay as well. And I'm going right. to try and find one of those because I like it from a perspective of just being a showpiece on the table. Table. Yeah, that's exactly. When I, I bought it, I think I bought um, my Davidoff. Uh, I only like the Davidoff Churchill late nights, right? So mm -hmm. I think I bought a box or two. And I remember when I got that email and I said, oh, okay. He said, oh, you get this, you get a gift. And I was like, guy, oh, let me see what the gift is. Cause usually their gifts are crap, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I don't need a t-shirt. So I got it and it's like, you get this beautiful Winston Churchill, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, okay, I'm buying. Gotta buy, gotta buy, yeah. gotta buy. So <laughs> I, I, like, I was like, that was like a no brainer. And then the, the cigars came and about a week later, the, the, the thing came and I was like, it's beautiful. I mean, like, it's just made out, I want to say porcelain. But it's made out of port. It's just absolutely. It's a work of art. So it's uh -huh. very, it's very beautiful. Um, kudos to them. However, on the on the zodiac cigars, <laughs> apparently they don't know. They still have no clue. We're what four weeks into it, still waiting. The fun part is okay. So based on that conversation that you had last week, I I, I met one of our um, cigar friends who happens right. to be distributor for Davidoff in Pakistan. Okay. We lost him, and he told me that apparently there are just 88 of those made or 96 of those made. I don't know what, what's the scene. Uh, I know there's 96 cigars in the in the thing. But apparently, the, but apparently the humidors are also this much. Oh, I didn't that's know what, that. Okay, well, then they're never going to get a hold of it. That's what I've been told, and, and that's what he said. I'm, I'm not sure whether I heard or he knows he knew it exactly right or not. That sounded strange to me for it yeah. being like, only 88 or 96 given the yeah. fact that they marketed for the entire world right uh, 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 for like exorbitant price that they're asking for it <laughs> i don't even know what the, i don't even know what they're asking for it 17500 how much 17500 dollars 17500 dollars yes sir that's okay, the price for, i could buy a, a couple le blue humidors and a couple bottles yeah. of scotch yeah and and, still, and and still have money with you and I still have money. I wouldn't know what to do with. Yeah, yeah, we're good. So, exactly. Yeah, that's fine. You know what, Davidoff? We're good. I got my Winston Churchill hat. I don't need the <laughs> seventeen five. That's crazy. Yeah. Well. So on that note, uh, I, I, so I, I'm, I, I like Davidoff cigars. They're good. Right. And all that. I'm not a very big fan of all of their series. I mean, I like right. the Grand Cruz, the uh, Signature Two Thousand, Signature Three Thousand, like the White Series and all of that. Right. But one thing I have to give and admit about it is that. Whenever they have these interesting gifts or interesting uh, additions to the boxes, right. they really have some very thought through ones. The first time I purchased that chef's edition uh, cigars, they right. came in amazing, beautiful ashtray, which was an ashtray, but right. it had a, had like a, a lid on it, a, right. a wooden lid. And the wooden lid, when you take it off, is actually a tray for two scotch glasses and in the middle for the accessories to be put in and 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 just like for for you to be presented with okay you right. can take your glass you can have the cutter and lighter here and you can light up your cigar and then you can use the ashtray very nice similarly uh yeah similarly then i also um <clears throat> got I, I i don't know if i've shown or not a new one has come up which is a ritual ashtray they call it which okay. is a very big size ashtray. Uh, so with the ashtray, it has like two cigar holders, right. uh, ceramic one. There's uh, there is there's a small box to put your cedar spells or or your match sticks. And on right. the side, there's a striker, a phosphorus striker on it. Wow. And it also has a brush. So if your if your cigars have that little bit of what people try to call it bloom or bloom or whatever. If you're right. wiping off, you can do that. It's very soft. Or wow. if you want to clean the ashtray and remove the ash instead right. of washing, you can use it with. So that's a very, very interesting ashtray concept. Similarly, yeah. this hat one. So I, 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 I'm becoming, I'm beginning to like their 
accessories and ashtrays that they come up with very creatively and they're very nice. Yes. Yes. Well, the problem with the 17.5 is that I could literally just every year buy a box. Yes. And $400 a box and I'd only spend four grand. So the problem is I can't, in my mind, could never justify 17.5. And I saw the beautiful little humidor it comes in, but I'm like, you might as well just buy an LE Blue. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And, so, and, and I already have an LE Blue, so I don't need like yeah. another one. So, you know what I mean? So no. it's like, yeah, it, I could just, I like their, I just thought it was just this cool concept to have 12 mm -hmm. years, if you will. But I'm thinking, to Riz's point a few weeks ago, if that's the case, I can just buy a, a box every year and just keep it. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and, and that's true. I mean, even at an average of, let's say, we know that the cigars in the Abidoff Zodiac signs were at different prices. That, but if, even if we average them at 600 or 650, yeah. we're talking of $7,500 in all 12 years as compared right. to $17,500, right. where you get where you get actually eight cigars per instead year, of 12, yeah. instead of 12 or 10, which has been yep. the concentration of the whole thing. So, yeah, I might as well do that. It was a nice thought, but like I said, and then they never got back to me. So at this point, I, even if they gave it to me, I'd be like, no, we're good. I got my <laughs> Churchill hat. So that's, and it's really funny. I do buy from Davidoff and I do buy from wholesalers, which I prefer because they're cheaper. But when I buy from Davidoff direct is when usually they have a cool gift. Yes. That's yeah. when I get the email that says, how would you like, this is a cool gift. And if you spend so much money, I'm like, oh yeah, that's how I got the, mm -hmm. the Churchill thing. I was like, I got to get that. But yeah. if you wanted to buy the Churchill Ashtray, I think it was like $150. So I was vacillating when I saw that. I was like, do I buy that or get the cigars? And I'm like, well, basically, it's an extra $250. Bucks. I might as well just get the cigars. So, yeah. you know, and then get the thing for free. So, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with their, um, their gifts. And as we talked about, they've got a good marketing thing going on. Yes. And, yes. and it, it is a name. And and they do produce quality to Absolutely. some people on, on our show don't like it. Uh, some of us do. Um, so, but no, they do no, produce no, a good quality. I, 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 I've never said I don't like them. I'm talking about the other guy. <laughs> oh, yes. The one who's getting his hair done. I understand. Yes, princess. Yes, yes. Yes. So, 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 yeah. But other than that, I think that they're, they're really good. They're really yeah. good. Uh, especially the white series I'm a big fan of. I don't really like their late hours. I right. think really, I, I think they're too strong for my liking. There you my, go. Okay. I, I, I have, I have, I, I, I'm not a big fan of very Maduro-ish types of okay. cigar or a very hard one. I mean, even in the Cuban <clears throat> uh, portfolio, where there are two regular uh, linears of Maduros uh, in Cohiba, Maduro Five, and in Partagas, the Bartagas Maduro one, two, and three. Well, nothing to do with the Cohiba, the brand name, or or the eliteness of that. I right. generally like the Cohiba Maduro five more than the Bartagas Maduro any given day. Gotcha. And even within, and even within those, I really enjoy the smallest of those, which is the Secretos okay. <clears throat> Maduro five, and not the Maikos or Genios that much because they are too strong to my liking. And sometimes they just like if I have to smoke that strong, I mean, I might as well go smoke two very big cigars uh, and get right. that kick, which, which I will still enjoy in right. a long company. Then, was finish one right. cigar, I was looking at okay, either I just get slapped or what do I do now? Right, right, right. No, that's what I said to you the other day when I had that Churchill and I sent it to you guys. Uh, I was like, I, I, I know how strong they are, but I always forget. Like, I can smoke one in three hours and I'll still forget. But it was sort of like I was smoking it. And like I said, I just sat there and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's <laughs> no, I'm good. It could literally, there could be a nuclear holocaust, an alien spaceship could have landed in the yard. And I would have been, that's not, I'm smoking. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, do whatever you got to do, you know. Go mutilate a cow. I'm happy. I, you know, like, I could care less. Okay, I'm not going to take a picture. So it's like that. It's a very chill smoke. So my yeah. friend, this has been a lot of fun. Too bad Princess Absolutely. couldn't make it. I think yeah, now totally. because Princess has a, a, her hair appointment now every weekend, apparently. Um, oh. we, may be changing, well, we may be changing the live show. So for you kids... The live show may not be this time next week, um, but it will be rebroadcasted every Saturday um, at 11 o'clock central, which is noon Eastern time in the U S. So yes. if you miss it, the live, you can always catch the rebroadcast. Um, if you want to be on the live and ask questions, of course, do that, but we will find yes. out from princess when the new time is, 
and we will get that out to everybody um, as easy, as quickly as possible. Um, so you can enjoy it. So we're, we'll go from there. I, I'm thinking maybe even when the show gets rebroadcasted, we put it in one of the comments. We can. Uh, oh, so so if somebody is interested in the live show, they still know when to join it. In addition yeah. to us sending that uh, massive message out. To yeah, everybody, right. but and they'll find us. They, who well, everyone loves the live show. Even the new press, incoming president of the United States, has said he loves our show. So, oh, oh, of course, of course. So I mean, cool. I, see, this time, uh, this time, I, I, I have to say, and uh, you have to admit, the princess is not here. I didn't talk about it. You missed him, and you brought him to the show. I had to bring it up <laughs> because because we do. Listen, I, the new dictator. I've got the emperor's got new clothes. Got to suck up. So we we love the new president. Um, and there you go. So, you know, and we Mr. listen, we've invited him. We've invited him. Mr. Trump, hello. We've invited him. We've invited him on the show. I think I told the story. I'm going to tell yeah. one more time before we go. Yeah. So who everybody knows, David sent out um, a couple months back requests mm -hmm. to okay. people to be on our shows, whether it's this show, Lost Dollar Business mm -hmm. Club, the other shows we have. He mm -hmm. sends one to Putin, Kim Jong Young. Oh, uh, G. Elon Musk, Donald Trump, and Camilla Harris. Okay. okay. He sent, he, please come on our show. You can talk about whatever you want. You know, like if you pick the show, he'll send the different shows, pick any of our seven shows. It would be fun to just have you on and just talk to you like a mm -hmm. human being, could care less what you talk about. Yeah. Out of, guess, guess who responded back and said, we'll let you know within six months. Who Out of all of those people, you have your choices, Camilla Harris, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Putin, um, Kim Jong Un or Xi from the president of China. Out of all of those, who do you think responded and said, "We'll get back with you"? Trump, Putin. Oh, the wow! Only, the only email we received back was from Vladimir Putin's people that said, um, "Give us about six months, and we'll get back to you if we can do it or not." He's the only one that responded wow. to us, and we got a kick out of that. Not Trump, not anybody. And I mean, like we realize we're not. You know, we're not Joe Rogan. We're better, uh -huh. but that's fine. But it was just funny because we invited everybody that's anybody and only uh -huh. one person got back to us. And we were, and David said to me, he, because he told me who he sent it to. And I was like, uh -huh. oh, he says, guess who came back? And I was like, you, I was like, I don't know. Try. I went down the list. Putin was the last. I was like, G, Kim Jong Young. I figured, you know, why not? His sister. And I was just kept going. He goes, no, no, keep going, keep going. I'm going, the book, book, book. And I go, you got to be kidding. The last one, the one I would never think of. He goes, yeah, Vladimir Putin. Vladimir yeah. Putin's people got back to us and said, we will get to with you in six months. And I think we're at the fourth month. So I'm not sure if he's coming on or not, but I, it'll be very <laughs> interesting to see what happens. So yeah, we invite them on all the time. And then we invite like yeah, world famous economists. Bro. Oh, yeah, that would be a fun show. Yeah. So, but, but we invite like world famous economists to come on Lost Dollar. They come on. People uh -huh. that write books, come, everyone comes on the Lost Dollar Business Club. We're like, you can come on. Come on a cigar show. Have a cigar with it. Like, you know? Yeah. And he's the only one. And I just thought that was the funniest thing. Like, all these power guys, that, blah, blah, blah. This guy who literally, you know, controls whatever he controls. <laughs> his, his, his is the only people that actually apparently read an email and go, okay. <laughs> We'll get in touch with you. We didn't even ask U.S. senators and congressmen when the UFO thing was hot yeah. to come on the show, and they none of them responded. Oh, yeah, they, nobody, nobody responds except Vladimir Putin. <laughs> so I'm thinking, all right, well, Putin, at least you respond, so, or at least yeah. he has a staff that has a clue. So absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm happy with that. So there you go. Anyway, <laughs> that was my story. I'm done. My friend, it's always good to see you. Everybody, absolutely. thank you for you're watching. Don't forget to like or subscribe. All you guys that are. Sting, well, you see Usman every week on the uh, private herf. Thank you for watching because I know they watch yeah. all the time. Um, and I think we're going to try to have some of them on um, because Absolutely. some of them have the, that one yes. gentleman um, that is married to the Cuban lady that he can only smoke yeah. Cubans. His And I know he won't show his whole cigar collection, but his cigar collection is, um, if you will, to die for. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, yeah. we, we, we need to speak to him uh, on a private part and then we... Yeah. We should bring him on. If he, yeah. and he can show just a little bit, even if he shows ten percent, yeah, yeah, you'll be env you'll be envious of the ten percent because he showed us one week like he he didn't blur his background and he went through his office and it's literally <laughs> like a wall of humidors of humidors of coolers of more humidors and he's pulling out stuff and you're just like wow, yeah, it's like ninety something, absolutely. So, 
but a beautiful, beautiful collection. So we'll try to have him on for you guys that are interested in cigars. If yes. not, once again, thank you for everybody watching. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, my friend. It's always good to see you. Absolutely. And we will see Absolutely. you all soon. Thank you, Juan. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Cheers, everybody.